Welcome back to this Tuesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Like to get your reactions to the demonizing of the American Family Association by President Obama and the Pentagon. By the way, if you'd like to call the Pentagon and complain about their demonizing of the American Family Association, here's the number that you can call. It's 703 571 Three three four three. That's the number for the Pentagon. If you'd like to register a complaint with them about demonizing the American Family Association, 703-571-3343. Now, by the way, I've got a column up on this development at onenewsnow.com. You can go to onenewsnow.com and you can read that column. Uh, if you'd like to call the program and weigh in on what's going on here with the American Family Association, number to call is 888 589 no, I'm sorry, 888-888-589-8840. got my eights and everything just mixed up there. 888-589-8840 is the number to call. One more clip, Rob. Let's grab clip number two. This is, again, a the second part of Todd Starnes' appearance this morning on Fox and & Friends. And Fox, the Fox Network has been very friendly toward the American Family Association in this uh, debacle last night on the Kelly file. Sandy Rios, the American Family Association, was interviewed by phone. It was a brief segment, but very friendly toward the AFA, critical of what the military is doing. And Todd Starnes went on Fox and Friends this morning. I think um, Brian Kilmeade was there. Steve Ducey, uh, uh, Ellen Hasselbeck was there. And again, very friendly venue for him to explain uh, what he had discovered. And here is the second uh, part of that section this morning. Um, a U.S. soldier um, in our Army spoke out. He said this, I had to show Americans what our soldiers are now being taught. I couldn't just let this one pass. I was completely taken back by this blatant attack, not only on, on the AFA, but Christians in our beliefs. Your thoughts on that? Elizabeth, uh, for the past five years under the Obama administration, we have seen a significant increase in anti-Christian rhetoric and activity in the, in the military. We know that this is coming from civilian lawyers at the Pentagon, and many of the troops are, are very, very nervous about their careers. We've talked to so many soldiers who say they're going to be getting out of the military as a result of this anti-Christian activity that seems to be directed specifically at Christians. But here's what I find interesting, guys. N not in any of these materials do we see anything about Islam. It's, it's mm -hmm. always about evangelical Christians or Catholics. And that goes to the point, uh, Todd Starnes uh, saying, look, in all of these efforts to demonize these groups and identify them as domestic terror groups or domestic hate groups, not a word about Islam. You know, I've got a story today from the British press. Remember that uh, jihad attack on that mall in Nairobi, Kenya? Well, U.K. authorities have just busted up a similar plot in the U.K., so we can't think because that happened halfway around the world, it's not going to happen here. There was a plot that was busted up in the U.K. to do exactly the same thing in a mall in the United Kingdom. All of the men that they arrested were British nationals between the ages of 25 and 29. The interesting thing is from the Associated Press, and you read through this story, you won't find one mention of the M word, that's Muslim. You won't find one use of the I word, that's Islam, in this whole story about this plot against this mall. But it does say they're all between the ages of 25 and 29 with roots in Turkey, Pakistan, Algeria, and Azerbaijan. You ask yourself the question, what do those countries share in common? What do these men have in common? And obviously it is a religion of Islam. So the real threat, if you're looking at an internal domestic terror threat, the real threat's coming from Islam. It's coming from Muslims. And Todd Starn says all of the focus of the military is on evangelicals and Catholics and pro-family groups like the American Family Association and the Family Research Council. You know, here's another thing. I was talking with Tim Wildman about this this morning, uh, and, and this is maybe the, about the most alarming feature of the whole deal is you've got the United States. Think about this for a second because this, this is particularly alarming, and I, it didn't really dawn on me until Tim had mentioned this to me. But think about how alarming it is that we have the United States military. Remember, these are the guys that are responsible to fight Al-Qaeda. 
That's the military. Who are they fighting? They're fighting their own citizens. That's what's spooky and creepy about all of this, is that they're even focusing military attention on domestic groups. They're supposed to be fighting al-Qaeda, not their own citizens. So that's what's really sort of bizarre about this uh, whole uh, development. So I'd like to know what you think about that. 888 is the number to call. I do have a column up uh, on our news website, One News Now, on this uh, topic. The title of my column is Attack on AFA. Our military is demonizing its own citizens instead of fighting uh, al-Qaeda. And so I walk through some of the things that we've talked about here on the program. And by the way, don't forget that, and again, the opposition, the tag of us as a hate group, comes for one reason, one reason only, that we oppose the normalization of homosexuality. That's it. But do not forget that George Washington was the first commander-in-chief, the first guy in charge of our military, and he dismissed two guys from the military for uh, the crime of attempted sodomy. Even attempting sodomy was a crime, and he dismissed them from the United States military, and he did so with these words referring to the attempt to commit sodomy. Washington expressed, this is George Washington, our first commander-in-chief, expressed abhorrence and detestation of such infamous crimes. Now, notice what he packed into one phrase. Washington says, look, I abhor this kind of sexual behavior. I detest this kind of sexual behavior. This as an infamous uh, kind of behavior, and it is criminal behavior. I mean, there's only two words, there's only three words in there that aren't, that, that really don't represent a pretty severe condemnation of homosexuality. The words and, of, and such are the only words that don't reflect a very critical view of homosexuality by our first commander in chief. Abhorrence and detestation of such infamous crimes. You know, and Todd Starnes talked about this dynamic in the military where you have the demonization of Christians going all the way through the military. He talked, we played the soundbite yesterday, what well, was in the first soundbite we played. He's talking to one soldier after another. They're not going to re-enlist. They're dropping out of the military, and they're not going to sign back up. They're not going to re-enlist because of what's happening to Christians in the military. So this is what represents the real threat to our national security is having Christian soldiers drop out of our military. They're the ones that have the passionate love for their country. They have a passionate love for their families. They have a passionate commitment to the values that made America great. Uh, they are willing to, to die for their families and die for their country uh, because of their patriotism and their love for this country that comes from their love of God, their love for Christ. And those are the people that were running uh, out of the military. Todd Sarnes said, look, it's happening all over the place and so this is going to weaken, uh, you know, weaken our military the more that this happens. You know, we brought you that story about Philip Monk. He's that sergeant at Lackland Air Force Base, 19-year airman, spotless career record. And he was ordered by his superior officer, who was a lesbian, to tell her what he thought about homosexual marriage. And he said, I don't agree with it. I'm a Christian. I believe marriage is a union of one man and one woman. He is now facing a court-martial. He's facing a court-martial for articulating a view of sexuality that was shared by the Founding Fathers and virtually unanimously in American history until the, uh, in the 1970s. So that's what's going on. Well, let's take some phone calls, what you think is being done to uh, the American Family Association and this larger trend of demonizing Christians in the military. Uh, let's begin with, uh, uh, let's go to Ted in, uh, if I can get it to, ha uh, I'm not getting anything to happen here. Uh, I don't know what's happening with my software here. Okay, let me uh, let me see if I can do the connection thing here. Having a little bit of uh, difficulty here with our caller software. Uh, let's see if that does it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, you got it. All right, let's let's go to Ted in Davenport, Iowa. Ted, you with us? Hello. Hi. Yes. This is Ted in Davenport. Hi. Yeah. Uh, welcome. First of all, I just want to say thank you for uh, representing the American Family Association for many years. I'm aware of your, uh, your accomplishments, very good. Um, I'd like to start by saying that it's very interesting that you spoke about sodomy recently right now because in July 2000, the, F the AFA sent out emails and letters calling for openly gay Arizona Republican United States Representative Member Jim Colby to be barred from the speaking 
at the Republican National Convention. And then on his way home, the ASA also called for Kobe to be arrested because he was gay. Uh, you said he was violating the Arizona law that banned sodomy. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Ted, you're saying that, that I said these things? The, the AFA. Um, we, so, so the, no, the, I will not go as far as say you personally because you personally. You're, you're saying that the, the you're saying that the AFA called for Jim Colby to be arrested. Yes, this was in 2000. I don't know if you remember, but there is records of it if you uh, do look. But also, um, if you want anything more recent, um, in August 2012, AFA Director of Issue Analysis U, Brian Fisher, compared children of gay parents to slaves, tweeting that. We need an underground railroad to deliver innocent children from same-sex households. Ted, do you know what now, I was? Ta- yeah, Ted, do you know what I was talking about there? Uh, well, evidently, you were talking about children of homosexuals. Yeah. Now, <laughs> do you know? Pretty do, obvious do, what you're talking about. Yeah, but do you know the specific situation I was talking about there? It doesn't seem like there needs to be a specific situation. Well, there, Ted, there, there was a spe- there, Ted, there was a specific situation. I was talking about one specific situation. This was a woman who had a child with a man. Then she got hooked up in a lesbian relationship. They formed a civil union in Vermont. They lived in Virginia. They formed a civil union in Vermont. The woman that she formed this civil union with had no biological connection to her daughter. It was her biological daughter whatsoever. She wanted to raise this child. She was concerned about the sexual abuse that her child was suffering at the hands of her ex-lover, her ex-lesbian lover, because they broke up, dissolved the civil union. And her daughter went to visit this lesbian ex-lover, came home with uh, a death wish, uh, wanted to kill herself, was desperately afraid she was going to be harmed, did not want to go back to that home again. And a judge actually awarded her biological child to the lesbian lover who was sexually abusing her own daughter. And she left the country to protect her own child. And she got some help from a Mennonite pastor. And I supported the Mennonite pastor in helping that woman hang on to her own child. Focal Point AFR Talk, back in two.